In this episode, I'm going to be working on my 1971 Dodge Coronet. And believe me, this thing is rough. But I'm going to try to give it a couple more things to get it more of a daily driver and a little bit maybe more closer to the autocross events I'm trying to get into. And that's going to be my ticket. I'll show you what I do. Alright guys, so I have been missing for about three months off of YouTube and that's mainly because it's my fault but I've been super busy and I haven't had a lot of time to really get down and make a video start to finish. It's just, it's, it's challenging and time consuming and I just haven't had it. But this is a down and dirty, I'm going to try to keep it under a one minute update, stick with me here, okay? So I'm going to do, an, I'm going to do a stopwatch. And one minute, let's see if I can do it. All right, so as of right now, this is where we're at with the 71 Coronet. I bought a 73 Coronet, 318 car, that was also just as much junk as that other one. It had a 318, didn't run for hardly anything. However, it could be rebuilt, it was good everything. I pulled the glass, the doors, I pulled all the good parts I could off the car, and then we ended up scrapping the car. Then on top of that, Running out. All right. So on top of that, I'm still trying to get the vehicle titled, uh, the Coronet titled in Texas. It's a whole pain. And then on top of that, we also have other speed parts that I have that we can drop on that moving forward. We started with a backyard install of a free muffler that cost me nothing to do because I was able to get the muffler for free and I got the help for free and I'll show you guys what I did. Other than that, uh, yeah, I'm going to try to do what I can to make progress. I'm going to start with the seat that I was dropping off to get reupholstered from the 73 to put back into this and then we're just going to kind of move through. Boom. Okay, one minute. So other than that, if there's anything else that I need to add in, I will probably end up cutting in from my house because it's cold down here and I don't want to have to keep running down here if I need to do a filler in. So I'm going to do a quick walk around the car, show you some of the changes that we've done and go from there, by the way, here's some white doors and some parts off of the donor car. So let's go out there and take a look. All right, a couple quick updates. Starting front to rear, everything that we've done over the last about 30 to 45, maybe 60 days uh, that I just, I've recorded, but I haven't got into a video. It's gonna cut through quite a bit, but it gives you a quick heads up. Number one, first thing I think I did was we Pulled apart the 71, I'm sorry, the 73 parts car. We swapped over the doors and I ended up pulling the, the uh, seats out and dropped them off to get reupholstered. So those are supposed to be due back anytime. They haven't been done yet. I think I got footage of them being dropped off. So, I'm trying to make progress on the Coronet. In turn, one of the things is reupholstering the seats. So these are out of the 73, that parts car. And, uh, well, that way I can keep driving with the original seats in for the time being. But yeah, I'm gonna drop these off and get them upholstered. Uh, let's see here. I also went through, we, I did the headlights. Uh, so we ended up pulling apart, uh, uh, there's a kit that you can buy for a seven, for a lot of these Mopars at least. I'm sure you can build one just like the kit I bought. Uh, which I'll show you to make your headlights brighter. I was having an issue with the headlights turning on and off uh, because they, they were too bright and they were actually tripping the switch. So that might be an issue if you're having, that could be uh, a fix it plan. We had the 73 that was right here. That's pretty much what's left of it. I got the doors currently on that car. I got the front suspension. I got the hood in the back, I think. I think the hood's in the back, I don't know. I just, I don't remember, okay? Don't don't hate on me here. Oh, and two other things that we did back there. Don't, uh, number one, we did uh, the back glass. I got the back glass installed and walking inside because it's cold here. We also installed a very redneck style <laughs> uh, bumper. I'm sorry, uh, muffler. The muffler was free, which I am not gonna knock. Joey at James Automotive actually ended up, I guess I'm gonna, guess I'm gonna stand over here now. Uh, so Joey at James Automotive actually was the one who was like, hey, I got a muffler, let's put it on the, let's put it on the cornet. Okay, except it was like a two and a half or three inch muffler. 
going on probably like a one and three quarter inch exhaust system. So we ended up rigging that up. Um, so it was uh, both Joey at James Automotive and then Sean, the guy that's further down that helped me on the last Cornet video, uh, which I'll post one of these corners here, um, actually helped me. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. We have made progress on this. And then I've also been struggling to get the title figured out. Uh, we've been, I've been fighting with that back and forth and uh, I'll probably walk you through some of that process as well. Yeah, All right, let's go. This tip's not big enough, I got a bigger tip over there, that's not a word. That's what she said. Oh, well, we've got a cutting blade, cut them up, uh, and they over that way. Because you got a fucking uh, fuel line over there, and it's got fucking fuel uh, going on this shit. So you wait until I get this thing fired up and torched it. Well, that damn, I didn't mention that, hey, we need a cutting blade. Uh, okay. About that later. We didn't die, <laughs> but did we die? Might need another blade because this blade kind of had it. What is it better shape than that one? So, here is the Cornet as it sits. We're gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna show you a couple things that I'm working on on this car. Uh, first off, it's gonna need an oil change because the oil is absolutely garbage and, well, non-existent because it's really low. And number two, I'm doing some stuff with the headlights, trying to get some other stuff done with the doors. You're gonna notice, why do you keep eating white doors? Well, we had that white Cornet. It was right here. It's no longer here. It's over there. You can kinda see it. And. Uh, we had some fun with it. We cut it apart mainly because it was a junk car. Uh, people who had it beforehand were uh, using it as a uh, car to push around 
things inside their scrap yard and in turn uh, they completely kind of well it, it was wrecked uh, has a lot of body damage and it was useless so we pretty much gutted everything that was useful out of it and here it sits yes so some people are gonna cry and say hey I need those fenders well they're they're not really good I mean they are there's no rust on them I guess but everything on this has body damage so they went through and they there's dings and knocks on out every panel it's yeah so if it was useful I pulled it off if not it's there and eventually to go to scrap yard but until then let's get back to the other cornet the good one and we're gonna see what we can do on an oil change I'm gonna walk you through the kit I have for my headlights which would be helpful for any of you guys who have any older doesn't have to be Mopar. I mean, it technically would work for anything that has the uh, three-prong traditional uh, old-style headlight. So, I'll get to that. things when you get an oil filter. So I always use Wix for all mine, however, there are other brands that do well. I go through and I press down each one of the holes to make sure that none of them are sealed up or Alright, on the car, let's see how this works. Hey Megan, can you use the rack? member which means it's all gonna spill out as soon as I start moving anywhere or it's gonna just start getting lost in the wind like this oh my god all right well that is dumb all right well I guess that's how that works enjoy where on the left is cats on the right is nipples and overlapping I panic when I let one escape oh geez Alright, still under the car, really dark, but just a little bit of grease. Number one, everything leaks, and number two, it's not gonna lock up on you when you tighten it down. Next time you gotta remove it.
So the kit I'm going to put onto the Coronet right now is a kit I was able to find on a web form that someone was selling. Uh, they end up, uh, once you run some newer headlights or brighter headlights, it's going to pull more amps uh, through your switch and your switch is going to kick on and off. So you'll be driving on the road, you'll have lights, and the next maybe 15, 20 seconds later, you don't once the heat switch, uh, once the switch heats up and then it'll keep switching back and forth. So, as of right now, you can buy these kits. Uh, I got mine on a website called 4bbodiesonly.com. There's a guy who sells these kits that are pre-made. They're coming with, uh, with relays already set up that it's a plug and play kit. It's pretty cool. Um, however, I did learn that these ends, which I didn't think anything of, he actually uses porcelain, which is the old school connectors, uh, unfortunately they can be kind of fragile. So if you're not too careful, you could do what I do and broke one. So this is gonna be the, ch the kit for the charger, for the 70 charger. Um, the one for the 71 Cornet's already wired in halfway. I'll show you kind of what I'm dealing with, uh, the soldering that I gotta do to fix it, and then we'll see how well it works. So uh, let's go check it out. Even notice I've lied to you. So, uh, as of right now, I was just going to weld, or sorry, not weld, I'm gonna solder on a connection for the headlights that, uh, for that kit I ordered. I'll walk you back through. I can't remember if I showed you the kit or not. They're all hooked up except one, however, it's a pretty cool design. And I'll show you kind of the, the final project of what I'm working with. Uh, it's definitely not cleaned up perfect, but it's closer. So, the initial one, the initial part of this kit will plug into the, to the low beam connector. So pick whichever side you want, low beam connector. And it's a kit that comes pre-wired. Comes with two relays, highs and lows, fuses. Connect them up to the battery and it's literally just a replacement plug. So yeah, I still have my old plugs in here. So I could technically go and cut those out, but I don't know if I have to. Hey. What's going on? So that's where we're at right now. I got the new plug in, and instead of going with the old plastic one I cut off, Joey called me an idiot and then said order a porcelain one. So we did that. So I got a porcelain one that I'm gonna cut and then resplice this one onto that headlight for the one I cracked, and we should be good. All right. That's good. So, Joey has a brilliant idea of putting a different muffler on the good old race car here. Uh, Why not? Well, so. if we're going to use his welder, then ah! drive it over there. Drive it over there? Yeah, All what right. do you think? Works for me. You, got, you ain't got room inside, but we can do it outside. What could go wrong here? My fiance is going to be a little pissed because, well, I'm not going to be home right away, but... Uh, you just tell me the car died. That's believable. Either way. Oh yeah, come on. Got to remove the oil pan.
All right. Let's self order more oil for this because uh, it's going to leak a lot. All right. I'm definitely not adding exhaust onto the Project Race Car Coronet. Definitely not. Oh, geez, okay, just like it's definitely not super windy outside? Yeah, well, it's actually pretty calm here, all things considered, but uh, oh, I'm on a time yeah, crunch. I love you, and I'll. Okay, well, I'm on a time crunch down here. I'm trying to get home as quick as I can, so I gotta keep working. Okay, love you. Love you. you. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. This is starts welding. This thing's actually working out. It's Project Race Car. It always works out. I don't know how straight it is. I don't know how it is. Was it good? Yeah. yeah. I don't think it was good. Fuck. Okay. I think it looks good. Send it. Yeah, it does. Did you notice when he hits his brakes, his reverse lights come on? I just saw that. Woo, he just did a real burnout. Well, it's done. Took what, hour, about two hours? I don't think it took that, did it? I don't we started at like that. five. Five? Yeah, so it's like six, Fine. Six, took about an hour. Now. Took an hour? About an hour. Yeah. About an hour. It would take me about three weeks, but they got it done in an hour. Shout out, thank you. Because uh, I didn't do much. I held the light, got yelled at. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. So other than that, sounds nice. Still a piece of ah. <coughs> correction. Uh, it's still a race car uh, in in the works, and uh, in turn, uh, maybe a four barrel and a blower would make this thing a lot better. Maybe a two four barrels and a blower, but <laughs> who knows? We'll go. Maybe. But uh, until next time. Yeah. That's that's how you redneck together uh, an actual quality exhaust. Yeah. Alright, so now that we're 
looking at also, I don't know when this is gonna get used in that footage, right? Um, I also have a couple other parts. So I ended up actually getting a sending unit, carpet for the Coronet, um, and then what we also pulled out was the fuel tank, which should be right over here. With all the parts and stuff that we also pulled out, uh, Joey and, well, Joey pulled out a lot of it uh, while I was trying to pull apart parts of the engine bay and stuff from the 73, he ended up gutting apart like a lot of the interior for me. Uh, and then on top of that, I do have one more little speed part here. And I'm optimistic about it, but y'all are gonna probably, anybody who knows anything about what I'm trying to do, is probably gonna tell me I'm doing it wrong. And that's fine. But, take a look. So these are 440 source big block heads. And anybody who knows uh, building wise for a motor, those heads are too big. They're way too big for the 383 that I have built. However, there's a couple things that I can do. Number one, first off, I need to solve a couple issues that the current 383 setup has. Uh, I need to get rid of the very, very terrible two barrel setup. So I bought an Edelbrock Torker single plane. So I can go to a, at least a four barrel carburetor to help me a little bit on that. Two, if I decide that, you know what? I get a really good deal and I can do something really dumb, specifically dealing with a giant blower, I'll probably do that too. Later on, might not be now, but I need, I just need the, the thing to run and be better than what it is, which is a complete dog. I think I did like a zero to 60 in like 18 seconds with that thing. It was bad. Also, the valves, I th were it could be the valves, it could be the rings, but one of the two is failing pretty bad because on startup, it smokes pretty bad. Like. Really bad. So yeah. We gotta figure it out. I'm gonna just drop some parts on it, see if I can get this thing to at least be fun until it decides to blow up. And until then, then we'll figure it out. But. If you guys have any questions, or if you guys wanna see uh, as we progress this more, hit like, hit subscribe. Let me know what you guys want to see, uh, anything specific in the comments below. I have not forgot about the charger. Believe me, I will continue working on the charger project. Um, I Believe me, you can look about all the links and stuff like that of us building this as well. Uh, I still have the D200 that I still have to do floors and heater and a bunch of other stuff in. I have a lot of projects. You guys just gotta let me know what you wanna see and I'll try to keep working my way towards that. But uh, until then, 